Hiya! Welcome! This is Records Roundup number 49. Thank you all for joining me for what is almost a half century of these videos. And I've got some great stuff to show you today. My two pickups from National Album Day, which I've talked about in a couple of previous videos and some brand new releases as well including i would say one particularly big one that's been the talk of the town or the talk of the vinyl community i should say anyway let's get going i'm going to start with a mail opening today because it's this here it's a cd this is a reissue of an album or a mini album i would say rather than a full album it's never had a standalone release before. It's from the band or the duo's official web store, and I'll explain more as I get it open. So this being a CD, it wasn't expensive, uh, 9.99 I think, and then a few quid in postage. It was due out the previous Friday as I'm recording this, and it's come a few days late, but that's not a problem. There is an invoice in there, but I shouldn't need that. The album is Relentless by Pet Shop Boys, so this originally came out in 1993 as a bonus disc on some, not all, but some copies of the excellent and one of my all-time favourite PSB albums, Very. And weirdly, I've never listened or heard, I think, most of what's on this six-track mini-album. It's never had a standalone release until now. I've only got it on CD as I tend to just collect Pet Shop Boys on compact disc and also DVD and Blu-ray when they release something visual. I have got Pet Shop Boys on vinyl but it's a couple of 12 inch, well EPs, singles that didn't come out on CD anyway that I wanted but generally, album wise anyway, I collect them exclusively on compact disc. So I don't think I'm going to get this open. You all know what a CD looks like. It's in one of those very thin wallet cases. Nice to get something that's got stuff on it that I haven't heard before, even though it's 30 years old now. I think one of these tracks, or maybe a couple, might have come on the Further Listening disc when Very got reissued some years ago. I've got all the Further Listening CD reissues. They're really good. I do recommend those if you want to get into Pet Shop Boys as they've got loads of b-sides and demos and stuff on them uh, but i don't think the majority of this even got put out on the very further listening disc so lovely to have that not really much else to say about it relentless by psb Right, now on to the NAD pickups, the National Album Day 2023 pickups, of course. Those of you who saw my video talk about National Album Day from a couple of weeks or so back will know what I've pre-ordered and they arrived a few days after the fact. There again, as long as I know stuff's on the way, I don't really need to get stuff on release date. And there's been some delays regarding vinyl records at a lot of places this year anyway so first one is forgiven not forgotten by the cause i have this on mini disc this is on 180 gram i think 180 gram no it says 100 percent sorry recycled vinyl uh, it might be 180 gram although it doesn't feel massively heavy but i don't suppose you can really tell just holding it like this uh, i like to double up on the cause I did show Jupiter Calling in the previous records roundup, even though I wouldn't say that's particularly a strong album, it's got some good stuff on it, and I didn't mind the price, it was about at the maximum of what I would pay for a brand new Cause album on wax. I will get this open, because it's going to be coloured vinyl, it looks like it's a gatefold sleeve, 
those of you rejoining me from Records Roundup 48 will know I had a right pig getting an OMD album out without damaging the actual album sleeve itself. So I'm hoping that was just a one-off, an anomaly. It is just one disc, this. Being that it's recycled, I don't even know what colour it's going to be. So this will be exciting to find out. Ah, very nice. I've got a purple one. And it's purple with kind of some sort of mottling effect in it. Spatter, I suppose you'd call it. So that's nice. I think it's quite cool, really, that you're guaranteed some sort of coloured vinyl when you get a recycled disc, but you don't know what colour it's going to be till you open it. So really happy to have got Forgiven Not Forgotten on purple vinyl. As I said in the National Album Day preview video, it'd be nice if more Cause albums from the 90s and the early 2000s, which was really their heyday, would get a vinyl reissue. Whether that'll happen or not, who knows. There is a reissued Best Of coming out with a few new tracks in December, but I would like to see Talk On Corners get a vinyl issue, even though I own that on mini-disc and I own all the Cause albums, either on MD or CD. But that was Forgiven Not Forgotten. The second National Album Day purchase is Dreamland by Robert Miles, the late Robert Miles of course, Italian dance artist, producer, very big in the house and trance genres particularly. Now when I bought this, when I ordered this, I just thought it was standard black vinyl but apparently I've seen since that it's grey vinyl. Looks in the photos I've seen anyway quite dark grey. So whether it'll show up very well on camera or not, we'll see. I will get it open. It's got one-on-one -on, -one on here, the club version as well, so the extended version, which is one of my all-time favourite singles. Children, another absolute trance classic. What was the other single off here? Fable, I think, as well. And um, this is an album I used to have on CD, so nice to get it back in the collection. Let me open this. There's no hype on it, so if... I have to tear off all the cellophane right now, that's not going to be a big deal. It is a two-disker as well, this, by the way. Not in a gatefold sleeve, just a standard one. It's out on Sony Music. And there's your disc. That doesn't look grey to me at all, that just looks black. But it's fine. I was expecting it to be black, and then I've seen people after the fact say, no, it's on grey vinyl, but <laughs> if it's grey, it's very, very, very dark grey. So grey, it might as well be black, right? I didn't really need to get that open just to look at that, given that it is, what I would say, black vinyl, and we've all seen a black record before. Not that there's anything wrong with them. Black vinyl matters, as he used to say. But that is Dreamland by Robert Miles. So pleased that I've added this back into the collection after many years of previously owning it on CD, and I got rid of the CD a long time ago, as I got rid of a lot of CDs in, that was, I think, the early 2000s, which was, I wouldn't say a mistake, but you do things and then you regret it years after the fact, don't you? Anyway, can't wait to hear that again. But have an angry heart sometimes.
Right, we carry on with a purchase from the Sound of Vinyl, and this is, I would argue, the biggest album to have come out in recent times. It's at the time of me recording this, it's only been out a few days. I got it, I think, the day after it came out there again. Very slight delays sending stuff out, but it's not a big deal at all. It's come out on many different vinyl formats, it's come out on a few different CD formats I've seen. It's even come out on cassette, apparently. And it's the first studio album by this legendary and long-running group I've ever owned. Have you guessed who it is yet? Of course you have. It's The Rolling Stones. This is their newest album, Hackney Diamonds. This is the edition that was the Sound of Vinyl slash Rolling Stones web store exclusive. I think the disc inside should be coloured as well. The only reason that I bought this was I heard the single off it, the first single, Angry. Hopefully I'll be able to play a little bit of it if I don't have to remove it right away for copyright. I thought that was a fantastic single, one of the best songs I've heard this year. I wouldn't say I'm a massive Rolling Stones fan, I've got one of their greatest hits on minidisc. But just on the strength of that one song, Angry, I thought, you know what, I'm going to get this. I want to hear it. I might as well buy it, as there's a lot of options. The Sound of Vinyl or Web Store exclusive seemed a good one to go for, with the slightly different artwork. I say slightly different, I think it's very different. But um, plenty of options there if you want to buy your own copy of Hackney Diamonds. Right, let's get this open to look at the vinyl. This looks like it might be gatefold. A lot of cutting with my knife today, but things seem to be going better than they did in records around up 48. This is only a one disc album. It's of course Rolling Stone's first proper studio album in many years. They did release a covers album some years back, but I think the last album of original material was something like, it does say on screen, I want to say 2005. I'm probably contradicting what I've put on screen, which is the correct information. It's come in a plain black inner, looks like it's polylined as well, which is always good. And there it is, so yeah, that's nice, it's like a translucent, very clear light blue. Looks good on camera, yep, happy with that. Excellent stuff. As I say, you kind of spot the choice really. I would argue that an album like Hackney Diamonds, it's kind of gone down the Taylor Swift route of being multi-formatted maybe a few times too often and people who maybe want every single format, it's going to cost them an absolute fortune to try and get them all. But if you're like me, very casual listener, casual fan, and you just want one, then lots to choose from. That's the positive of it. It means you've got a wide choice. Struggling to get that back in. There we go. Finally back in the sleeve. Hackney Diamonds, the clear blue edition from Rolling Stones. As I say, Angry, I really love that song. I think it might be my favourite Rolling Stones single, even above We Love You Dandelion from the 1960s and Sympathy for the Devil, which are generally my two favourite Stones singles. But Angry is up there now if not ahead of them. I don't really know other people's opinions on it. There's much bigger Stones fans than me out there. Like I say, I almost got this on a whim, really, just on the basis of enjoying one track. For all I know, I might not like any of the rest of the album. I'm sure I will, but I'm very excited to hear it in full. Let me know your thoughts on Hackney Diamonds if you've heard it already. And that's my pickup from The Sound of Vinyl. Please just forget about Cancel out my name Right, finally, a couple of purchases from Banquet Records, which is a bricks and mortar record shop in Kingston-upon-Thames in London. One thing here is a single, I'll show you that first. The other one is another brand new release. The single is one that it's 
supposed to be a limited to only a thousand copies and it suddenly come back in stock in a few places. I decided to get it from Banquet as I wanted the album as well that I was ordering from there and swayed her back on the channel with a reissue, a 30th anniversary reissue on picture disc of their very first single, The Drowners. Technically it's a double A side, The Drowners and To The Birds. So I like these suede picture singles that are coming out. This is the first one. I didn't pre-order it when it was initially announced, but glad that I was able to get in on the second pressing and pick it up. I uh, don't think it was too much, so like $12.99 or something like that, which is okay, fine for a 7-inch single. Out on Demon Records, they're releasing all the singles that came off the first Suede album, which got a half-speed remaster reissue this year to commemorate its 30th anniversary. I didn't buy that, I bought a previous edition, which actually was the London Suede, so it was like the American edition that was reissued a couple of years or so back. So I don't really want to double up, but I thought it'd be fun to collect the singles off that album on these nice picture discs. So that's The Drowners by Suede. I um, don't think there's going to be really much to show you on the back. It probably looks like that on the back. I won't get it open just to keep this video chugging along a little bit. I know some of these records roundups have been quite lengthy lately, but I appreciate anyone who watches all the way through, sticks with me to the bitter end. And that's going to be a nice quick listen as it's a 7 inch single with just two tracks on. The Drowners from Suede, look out for more Suede 7 inch picture discs as I've pre-ordered I think all of them now from various places. And they're coming out over the next few months, more of those to be seen in due course. <laughs> And finally, here's an album that I know is going to please T.C. Kirkham of TKR Video Central and the Kirkham Report that I've picked up because in the last Kirkham Report that I watched, I mean, I thought it was going to explode with excitement when he showed this album. Go get this album right now. Go right out now and find it in your local record store or order it online. This album rocks. I did actually get in touch with him recently and said that I'd ordered this myself also from Banquet, in the same order as the Suede single there. It is the debut, I believe it's the debut anyway, certainly physical debut album from Mr. Daddy Freya of Iceland. This is I Made An Album, a bit of a twee title admittedly. Um, now I've got TC to thank in part really for getting into Daddy Freya because he plays a lot of his clips on his weekly chart roundup uh, Power Tracks 50 um, which he puts out every Saturday night I was watching it on Sunday morning because of the time difference but I was familiar with the guy previously because he was the Icelandic entry in Eurovision in 2021 I think it would have been in 2020 but obviously that event was cancelled for global pandemic reasons he appeared at this year's Eurovision, he was like one of the interval performers, I think, and he did a cover version of Atomic Kitten's Hole again. A song I never liked particularly, but his version's really good. I'm a little bit surprised that it's not on this album, actually. Perhaps he wanted this debut album to be all original material, and some of his original material, what I've heard, is really good. Uh, thank You is, I think, my favourite of his songs so far. I've not heard all of these yet by any stretch, uh, but I've heard a bit of Sunshine and Moves to Make as well, mainly thanks to the Kirkham Report, Power Tracks 50. So this is on black vinyl. Wasn't too much, I think this was 1999. Looks like it's signed there, but that isn't the proper signature. 
that's just a facsimile just really good quality original electro pop don't let the fact that he's been on eurovision and stuff like that put you off you know he's not just some sort of cheesy artist really uh, although not that it'd bother tc if he was because uh, mr kirkham does love his absolute cheddar in the music business i mean bloody hell he loves barry manilow for one thing and michael bolton jesus Anyway, before I get ranting about other people's taste in music, um, I'll wrap this up by showing you one more time an album that I think, out of everything, I'm looking forward to hearing the most because, you know me, I'm an electronica guy, I'm a synth-pop guy, and this is going to tick those boxes for me. Daddy Freya, I made an album. <laughs> And that was Records Roundup number 49. I think I've actually got this one down to a shorter length than the last couple of editions, but um, who knows? I'll only know for certain once I've done the edit, but I'm pretty confident that uh, I won't have kept you quite as long. But I do like to do these videos as fairly lengthy because I'm always buying a lot, so I've got a lot to talk about, a lot to show you. I've shown you a lot today. Um, I've still got stuff on the way, there's another big new release that's coming out this week that I'll no doubt be showing you in Records Roundup 50 and um, there's other pre-orders and stuff coming along in November, December, January even and that's not even including any inputs purchases that I might make but thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed it and I want to say special thanks as I always do and always will to my wonderful subscribers and generous patrons Please see my Patreon link and my Facebook group link in the description text box. There's also a referral for HMV if it still works. I don't honestly know. I probably should check on it. And there's also a referral link which does work, I'm pretty certain, for Urban Jungle Contents Insurance. I'm going to go now. Loads to listen to. The backlog, I've managed to get down it a little bit. You know, I've probably got down it more by the time this video comes out. But as of me recording this video, the backlog from the previous video has lessened a little, but probably not quite enough really. But I've just added to it again. Always happens. Not enough hours in the day for listening to all this great music, but I'm going to go and listen to it anyway. And I do hope that all of you will join me again next time for my next music collecting video and records roundup. Cheers everyone. See ya!